Hey people, this is no doubt the most exciting bike check I've ever had the chance to do for you guys, for myself, for Red Bull, for this place down in Devon. So I'm at Kai Forte's field where we've built this insane course. It's sort of slope style esque, but very creative, very different for me to land some world's first tricks. And I'm into that filming now. I've landed a running gain, a backflip, bomb drop, crazy thing off of that platform up there, which I'm stoked with. Got it first go after months and months of training it into a swimming pool and airbag. We've got a whole behind the scenes video of all that stuff, but this bike, this bike has been specifically built, designed, painted. It's all 100% custom and bespoke for this project and these tricks. And I'm buzzing to talk you through it. So the Marin Alcatraz frame is the, the center of this whole build. It's the dirt jump frame that I designed with Marin that's super short. Like you can see there, the clearance between the tire and the seat tube is negligible. This is pretty much as short as a dirt jump bike can be. The geometry of this frame hasn't changed, but it's the paint job which sets this bike off to like an extent that I could never have imagined. This is the coolest paint job I've ever seen on a bike. It is the ultimate. So Image Design Custom took on the task to make a sick paint job. This is fully bespoke. It's got the most unreal blue to green fade, which is super cool. And it's kind of in keeping with the Alcatraz bikes I've had in the past, but this one is next level. So we've got Hellfair logo on there, which is going really sick. Me and Ben are stoked on New Jersey. This is a brand new Jersey, which is limited edition, designed for this project to match the bike, to match the custom Red Bull helmet I've also had done. I'll talk about that in a minute. But there's loads and loads of detail on this. This bike was actually painted right back at the start of the year when this project was supposed to happen. It's got Burn Crew logos for Woburn, Burn Crew. A lot of you know what that is by now. It's kind of cool and there's a Porsche GT3 because at that time I'd got a brand new car as well. So this bike is unreal. And all the close-ups, when you look at the paint and how it really works with the sunlight, it's mega. It's like this crazy marble granite effect, which is all achieved, I think, by screwing up a plastic bag and like pressing it into the paint. So more about this whole bike, because the frame is super special, but there's some other stuff on this build, which is really, really cool. So the cranks are a huge factor. Loads of people love these cranks. They're the, the Cane Creek E-Wings full titanium cranks, which are lighter than carbon fiber ones, so much stronger, and they look insane. With the absolute black oval chain ring, that is like really cool. And in terms of color as well, it goes with anything. So it's the sickest sort of drivetrain setup I've ever had. These cranks are the 165 mil long ones, which I need for my jump bike, and it's super unique. They're the first ones in the country, which I've taken off my other Alcatraz and put it specifically on this bike. Um, 32 tooth front chain ring and 13 at the rear, which is quite a hard heavy ratio, but when you hit big jumps and you want to put a pedal in last minute, you kind of need that when you're single speed. And the oval, you can see it working there. How good does that sound by the way? I'm going to talk about the hub in a minute, but the oval works perfectly single speed. It blows a lot of people's minds, but I run those on all my bikes, so I need it on the dirt jump bike as well. My pedals are the Gusset S2 pedals, which I actually filed the pedal pins down a little bit for that trick up there, because I found well, long story, but they're actually too grippy at the time. And I've even put grip tape on top of my cranks. So when I catch, whether I don't catch the pedals or don't catch the cranks, there's something to hold on to. So wheels, because that hub, listen to that. That's the best sounding hub ever made by humans. That is the Halo Superdrive single speed hub, which is now adapted specifically for mountain bikes. So you can put a mountain bike cog on the rear and not a BMX one, which is cool. So that means I can match it up with that, with a mountain bike chain and it's just the best sounding hub. There's 120 points of engagement, which is every three degrees. So if you race four cross, you can get your feet perfectly in the gate. If you're pedaling out of a corner, you can get on the power earlier. Or if you're rolling around a skate park, you sound like a complete gangster and everyone wants to be your mate. And then the wheels are 26 inch Halo Chaos wheels, rims, sorry, which are super light, but insanely strong. I can't stress how robust these rims are. And Halo have made me some custom decals for the Chaos and the Halo stickers, which are interchangeable but they've made me ones that match this paint job perfectly. And that's the kind of the cool thing about this whole bike, this whole project, even the Ford Raptor that we're filming with, the bike, the jersey, the helmet, the stickers, all match. It's all like in one, which is really cool. And that's hard to do without planning. So this took a lot of planning and even the delays because of COVID and stuff have actually helped me dial it in. So a few more details, tires, Continental Speed King on the rear, 26 by 2.2, pumped up to 80 PSI. There's no faster tire on the planet. It's so, so, so rapid. And the front tire is a Race King, also 2.2 wide. But you can see it's got a few more nobbles on it, which adds just a bit more grip, whether you're carving up lips or going round loose cutty turns, they feel sick. 
And the, I can't believe I've left the forks this late. These are exclusive as well. These are one-offs and a lot of you have seen these before. Olin's have made me a dirt jump fork which have 90 mil of travel. They're boosts, so they're 110 mil wide, which is wider than my front hub, but they've been adapted with some little spaces to fit a dirt jump bike. They're very, very light. I think like five grams lighter than the Fox ones I had on before, so pretty much the same, but they're Olin's, so it doesn't get more factory, it doesn't get more race. They're like Nürburgring products adapted for the skate park, and they're mega. So that's the forks. It's quite an insane build, this. And then more about components. So I've got a gusset seat post, gusset seat clamp, and a gusset S2 saddle, which does up through the seat post so you don't have a slit on top, which looks cool. And we designed it to have these little grippy pads on the side, so when you pinch the seat for bar spins, you can throw a few extra ones. I just haven't really learned to yet. And uh, gusset S2 bars and stem as well. I cut my bars down to 730 mil wide, which is much narrower than I would on like an enduro bike or a downhill bike. And I've got the shortest stem you can get, which is 33 mil long. So it makes the cockpit really close to you. It spins around better. I've got a gusset top cap. Oh, and they, they actually did a custom sticker as well for that. So that's kind of like that green, marbly blue fade, which matches everything. And grips are also gusset. They're the sleeper grips. I don't run lock on ones. I just like the slide on BMX grips. I have a flange on the brake side. So if I catch kind of the brake lever, look, Moose knows all about it. Oi, just because you're on the bike doesn't mean you have to be in the bike check. But I cut the flange off the other side because even with that running gainer, I honestly rode out holding the bar like this and then whether I had a flange or something, it might have put me off. So it's quite sick riding like that. Um, have I talked about pedals? Yeah. Help me out, Ben, what have I missed? Tie bolts, this is factory. So I've got a big eight mil tie bolts at the back, which are literally half the weight. You save 20 grams just in those two bolts. Brake caliper bolts all around here, a blue titanium, so it matches the frame. The brake lever, the, the headset bolt. There's a lot of titanium on this bike. It's very, very sick. So for such an insane bike, like the most insane build I've ever had, the sickest paint job, Image Design also have done me a brand new helmet to match. So they've used the exact same paint technique, but this helmet's gloss. So I used to always run matte helmets and now I'm so stoked on gloss ones. Like on a day like today, there is no cooler helmet in the world. The gray, the blue rhombus looks sick and that effect of the marble just runs all the way through. It's just mega. Then the red ball, you can see like the black shadowing all the way around, makes it pop out. It just looks sick. And there's the 100% logos there. So I ride for 100% helmets, protection, and this is sick. The MJ logo exists still on this one too. I've never really used that logo on anything else other than my helmet, but I guess they are my initials and may as well have them on the back of my head when I ride. So that is the helmet that matches this bike, which matches this jersey, which matches the Ford Raptor, which is just all Red Bull-esque and filters into this insane course and project that I've been working on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Oh, and I've got pink tie bolts on my rotor too. Just spotted them. That's the full bike check. That is my build. Oh, and it weighs, that bike weighs 9.7 kilos. And for the running gainer, I took the brake off, which made it weigh like nine and a half kilos. It's the lightest bike I've ever had. Even repainting it made it lighter than a standard Marin Alcatraz, 22 grams less. And then various other things, all the bolts save a lot of weight, so it's sick. So honestly, I've never been more excited and stoked about a bike. But it's more than just the like aesthetics and the paint. This bike is so important because it's enabled me to do some of these tricks. Having it as light as physically possible was a huge, like, it's a massive factor. It was paramount that I made this bike less than 10 kilos, lighter than my previous ones, for doing the running gainer, for doing this trick on the hitching post, which I'm yet to do. And it took a lot of thought to get the weight down. Like I was, honestly, my bar ends, like these gusset bar ends are cut down. I sawed plastic off the insides of them. I've been putting like really skinny cable ties on, these blue ones. It's insane. Tie bolts, only running four rotor bolts. If you do all those little mod modifications across a whole bike, it really, really adds up. And that's the only way I've got the weight down to be able to do the tricks. Back at my compound doing the gainers, my bike just weighed too much. I had a brake with a long hose. I've cut the hose down so I can do less bar spins, but I've got a lighter brake. All those little mods have allowed me to do these welds first. So it's a super, super special bike. It will never be sold. It might do a giveaway, but realistically it's going on the wall. So I hope you like it. And hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys out on the trails and I'll have this bike for you to look at as well. Legends.